One night, as Queen Maya slept, the depths of her mind and spirit formed a premonitory dream. She dreamt of a great white elephant that with six tusks that descended from the sky and pierced her womb. The penetration filled her entire self with light. <laughs> she awoke with the understanding that this was no ordinary dream. The queen told her husband, King Sarodana, of the dream. <laughs> and they agreed to consult a wise man named Asita. My dear king and queen, the dream you had was no ordinary dream. Your womb that was pierced by the six tusks of the white elephant will be a womb filled with a sun that will one day become a great leader. I should like to meet this boy when he is born. The king and queen were ecstatic. The king was especially thrilled with the news, as he understood that his son would one day be a worthy successor to his kingdom. The queen became pregnant shortly after. The boy grew up quickly. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Ten months after Queen Maya dreamt of the white elephant, the pregnant queen was on her way to her father's house. Her baby was coming. She peacefully walked into the moonlit garden. That night, she gave birth to a son, whom the king and queen named Siddhartha, or the one who brings all good. News of the prince's birth spread, and many came to visit the baby and his parents. Asita, the man who predicted Siddhartha's greatness, was one of these visitors. My dear king and queen, as I look into the eyes of this boy, <laughs> I weep. Do not be discomforted by my bitter sweet tears, for I am crying not for the baby's misfortune, but for my own. I cry for myself, knowing that I will not be alive to hear the teachings of your son. My queen, as happy as I am to hear the Sita's news, I am also worried that <laughs> I am also worried that our son will become a saint and not become the heir to my throne. We must prevent him from seeing the sad truths that exist on this earth and any kind of suffering or anything that will divert him from his path of becoming my successor. The king then built high walls around his palace and hired only young and happy servants. Siddhartha would grow up surrounded by only the best and the most beautiful. The boy grew up to become a young man of gentle compassion. He learned quickly and was very intelligent. He loved his palace, but was constantly intrigued by the servant's stories of lands, people, and languages outside of his palace. Father, I would very much like to see what is beyond these palace walls. May I leave to visit the village? The king was taken aback by his son's request. He believed he had provided everything for his son in excess. Why would he require of anything more? Nevertheless, the king agreed. Why, Siddhartha, I will allow you to go into the village. Servants will accompany you, and I will need a few days to arrange your arrival to the village. Thank you, father. I appreciate your understanding. The king arranged for only the most beautiful and young villages to be present on the day that his son would go to the village. everyone is outside the palace. <coughs> <coughs> oh, 
I really do not feel well. <laughs> I am feeling especially old today. <laughs> human suffering was an arduous adventure. He left his palace in the middle of the night to avoid a dramatic ordeal. He joined a group of ascetic monks who believed that by denying oneself nourishment, sleep, and possessions, an enlightened state could be achieved. Though I have mastered the pain of starvation and fatigue, I feel I have come no closer to understanding the nature of human suffering. Sir, can I offer you a bowl of rice? <laughs> My child, I will accept your offering, as I have become weak. Too weak even to sit for long periods of time under trees. Thank you, young girl. Thank you for providing me with nourishment. You're welcome. <laughs> as Siddhartha ate, he understood that neglecting himself bodily needs was not the key to ending human suffering. Simplicity and moderation was a more achievable state of being. The nourishment he received from the young girl provided him the strength to sit. I will sit under this tree until I understand the causes of human suffering, and I will not move until I achieve enlightenment. No matter what I am confronted with during this state, I will continue to seek the truth through silent meditation. During the 49 days that Siddhartha sat beneath the Bodhi tree, he was confronted with unexpected thoughts. These thoughts and feelings danced in his head. Anger, anxiety, <laughs> depression, and fear took form and seduced his thoughts, teasing and taunting his peace. Ladies and gentlemen, I am hesitant to introduce our first performer of your mind. Please stop your hearts, become concerned, and distress your breath for anxiety. <laughs>
the next dancer invades the stage. So please, everyone, get bummed, dole out the dole, and lose all hope for depression.
enlightened. <laughs> <laughs>